We might assign different colors to cells for many reasons, whether directly or by applying conditional formatting. If later on we need to sum a column of numbers based upon the cell fill color, we realize we do not have an Excel function to do that. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you two methods to sum with a condition in the cell fill color. I'm not using a VBA code for this tutorial, although it could be a third option. So let's see how we add numbers based on cell color in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have a list which shows a date, a region, a sales wrap, and a sales amount. And I applied some colors to the sales. Some of the values have a red fill color, or green, or blue, or orange. And I would like to sum by color, but unfortunately we do not have a function in Excel like the sum if function that sums based upon the color, whether it's red, green, or blue. So I'm going to show you two techniques to perform this task. The first one, I'll be using a combination of function with a built-in tool in Excel. Let me show you what I mean. We have a function in Excel called the subtotal function, and the subtotal function is a replacement for 11 different functions. So if I want to jump to the very bottom of the sales column, then I double click on the lower border, and then I'm going to move one further row down, and I'll be creating my subtotal function. So I'll be typing equal subtotal, and then I hit tab, and because the subtotal function is a replacement for 11 functions, it asks you, how would you like to use the subtotal function? By providing a number, you can use it as an average, as a count, as a max, as a min, and so on, 11 different functions. The numbers from 1 to 11 are the numbers that specify which function you want. But we have another set of numbers starting from 101 to 111. What's the difference? Although I have the same set of functions in the same order, so if you are looking for a sum function, that's function number 9 or function 109. The functions with three digits will exclude the hidden rows or the filtered values. So I'm going to use the 109 to sum. So I hit the tab key and then I hit comma. It asks me where is the range you want to sum. So I select the value above. I hit shift control up arrow and then shift down arrow to exclude the label. And then I hit enter. So the sum of this amount is that much. I can apply currency formatting by using the shortcut control shift 4 and that will be the total amount. Now I'm going to apply a filter by color and to apply a filter by color let's say I want to see only the red values so I'm going to select one of the red cells I right click and from the right click menu I select filter by selected cell color. So what remains are the red colors only, and because the subtotal function is pre-programmed to exclude the filtered values, then the number you see is the sum of the red cells. Should you wish to release the filter, then you use the shortcut Control shift l I can also use the subtotal function in a table structure. So in the next worksheet, I click on Table, and I have the same exact setup, but I want to format it as table. So I'm going to select a single cell. I use the shortcut Control T. My table has headers. I hit OK, and I would have converted the list into a table. I don't like this style, so I'm going to remove it by selecting None. I'm acquiring the table functionality without changing the appearance. Now in a table format, I do have an option called the total row. On the Design tab, I check the box for Total Row, and that will take me to the very bottom directly. And as you can see, it created a subtotal function. So if I click on this cell, and then I put it in the Edit mode, it created a subtotal function using the table nomenclature. So this column is the sales column, and I hit Enter, and I get the subtotal. 
should you wish to apply a filter by color and combine it with the subtotal functionality then I'm going to right click one of the green cells I hover over filter and I select filter by selected cell color now the total that I see that's the total amount for green should you wish to release the filter there is a special shortcut for tables alt AC and that one releases the filter that was method number one by using the subtotal function, whether in a list or a table, combined with the filter functionality. Now I want to show you a much more powerful technique. So I'm going to switch to the next worksheet. And in this worksheet, I'm going to use one of the old macro four functions. This is an old set of functions, and the function that I'll be using is called the get.cell function. It extracts information related to the worksheet environment. The get.cell function has some characteristics. It consists of two arguments. The first argument is what information would you like to get about the worksheet? This is called the type number. And the second argument is the range that you are evaluating. So depending on what information you want to get, then you will be specifying the number. And because I want to extract the cell fill color, then I'm going to use number 38 for the cell fill color. The other thing you have to know about the get.cell function is that you cannot use it directly in the worksheet. You have to save it in a defined name. And this is what I'll be doing right now. And because I'll be using this function in cell E4, I'm going to create it from the perspective of this cell. So it will apply on any cell that is to the left of the selected cell. And because the get.cell function must be created in a defined name, then I'm going to click on the formulas tab of the ribbon and click on define name. Alternatively, I use the shortcut Control Alt F3. In the define name dialog box, I need to give a name to my function and I'll be naming it find color. In the refers to box, I'll be writing my get.cell function equal get.cell. And then I open bracket. And because I want to extract the background color, so I type 38, and then I type comma, and I need a reference. But I'm going to create this reference in a very special way called the global relative cell reference. So I type an exclamation mark, which is a reference to the worksheet. And then I'll be writing the cell to the left side of the selected one, which is D4. So when I use this function, it will always apply to the cell to the left side of the selected one. And I would have created my find color named range, which stores the get.cell macro function. I hit OK, and now I can create this function in cell E4. Equal find color, and you can see it pops up in the IntelliSense list of Excel. I hit the tab key. And without any arguments, I hit enter, and it extracts the color for the red, which is 3. I can double click and send it down, and I would have extracted the number that corresponds to each fill color. So for the green, it's 10, for the orange, it's 44, for the blue, it's 23. Now using this column, I can create a sum if function. So I select cell H2, and in cell H2, I want to look at this entire column having all the numbers in column E and select my condition from cell H1. In cell H1, I wrote the color and at the same time I have a drop list to switch colors. So if I select blue, then I'll be adding up the cells in blue. I have a conditional formatting applied that changes with every different option I select from the drop list. Let's start with the red color. So I'll be typing equal sum if, and then I hit tab. The first argument for the sum if function is the criteria range, the range having the condition. So I select the first cell in column E. I extend my selection shift control down arrow, and I jump back to the function by hitting control backspace. And then I hit comma. What's your condition from this entire column of numbers? Well, my condition for the red should be 3. 
but I want to make it dynamic. So whenever I change my condition from the drop list, I'll be summing a different color. And that's why I created to the side a range which showed the names and the corresponding number. And to extract that number, I'm going to use a VLOOKUP function. So I'll be typing VLOOKUP and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? Whatever color comes from the drop list. And then I hit comma. What's your table array? My entire list with the two columns. And then I hit comma. What's your column index number? I need a return value from the second column, so I type two. And then I hit comma. Is it an exact match or an approximate match? It's an exact match, which means false, which means zero. And now I close the bracket for the VLOOKUP function. Now, if you want to test this part, I'm going to select it from the screen tip and I hit the F9 key. And now it says I'll be returning three. That's wonderful, which means it's dynamic. I hit Control Z because I don't want to hard code number three. And now I hit comma after closing bracket for the VLOOKUP function. And the last argument of the SUMIF function, what would you like to sum? Well, I want to sum the sales amount. So I'm going to select the first number under sales, shift control down arrow to select the entire column and then control backspace to jump back to the top and I close the bracket and I would have created my function. When I hit enter, that's the total amount of sales for the red color. Let's check how dynamic it is. If I click on the drop list, then if I select green, that's the total amount for green and the conditional formatting makes it easier for me to recognize the color. So if I select orange, then that's dynamic. Let's see what if I change one of the values in the orange cells. So I'm going to select one of the orange cells and instead of 500, I'm going to make it 2000. And when I hit enter, automatically it updates. The question is, what if I change the color of a cell? So what if I go to one of these cells, let it be the 500, and I want to change the color, and I'll make it orange. I go to the Home tab, I click on the drop list, and I'll be selecting an orange color. Unfortunately, when I change the fill color of a cell, then the function does not update automatically. And to update it, you have to do one of two things. Either recreate the helper column one more time, which is a hassle, or alternatively, you can use the shortcut Control Alt F9, Control Alt F9, and my function updates automatically. Remember, we are using the get.cell macro function, which simply means you have to save your workbook in a .xlsm format. I added an extra sheet with instructions about the get.cell function and what type of information you can extract using different numbers from 1 down to 66. These are the different worksheet information that you could extract from the worksheet using the get.cell macro function. The one that we used is number 38. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and keep supporting my channel by sharing the video, by writing a comment, by subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.